Welcome back, kiddos. Graceless here, and today I would like to talk about gods and ascendants and try to explain a little bit more about how all that works, since people tend to get a little bit confused on it. Throughout the Malazan world, there are many different gods, ascendants, spirits, and there's a lot of overlap between them all. So what are the differences between them and how do these power structures arise? Well, like most things in the Malzahn series, there isn't a simple answer. I know this is frustrating for a lot of people, but the series and world is so massive that it's really hard to answer some of these questions in a concrete way, though personally I like the lack of concrete information since it provides a little bit of mystery that you can kind of sift through a lot of the answers and try to find what it means to you. As I've mentioned before, the Malzahn world is based on the backdrop of their tabletop role-playing campaigns, so it might be easier to think of some of these terms in more of character levels, and Ascendants are essentially very high character levels, and Gods are usually an order of magnitude above that. Though there are some overlaps between Gods and Ascendants, as they're not mutually exclusive, uh, it's kind of like a square and a rectangle, where every god is an ascendant, but not every ascendant is a god. When someone ascends, they achieve immortality. This doesn't mean that they're impossible to kill, but it means that they have a greatly lengthened lifespan, increased healing, a natural immunity to disease, and they are a lot, lot more strong. Sometimes, this just means that they're a lot more hard to kill, but one thing is for certain, an Ascendant's actions can cause waves throughout the entire world. A prime example of an Ascendant is shown right away in the character of Anomander Rake. The Siege of Pale was held at a standstill for over three years just by the presence of Rake in Moonspawn, showing just how much the Malzons respected his power as an individual. They waited until they had a full Mage Cadre, as well as the power of High Mage Tatrin, who is arguably the strongest mage, uh, within the Malazan Empire. And even then, Rake barely broke a sweat in rebuffing the mage's attacks, though Moonspawn took enough damage that Rake eventually retreated. In regards to power level, Anomander Rake is probably the strongest ascendant and is really just comparable to the level of a god. Gods are generally another tier above an ascendant, though, again, power can vary greatly even amongst gods. And the only real difference between an Ascendant and a God is that a God specifically has worshippers. Additionally, there are two types of Gods. New Gods and Elder Gods, though new ones are obviously just referred to as Gods throughout the series. Elder Gods are ancient and primal, tending to come from elemental forces such as the oceans, and similar to our own Old Gods, the Elder Gods demanded blood sacrifices and that is what gave them their immense power. As time goes on, most Elder Gods lose followers and fade from existence, but then the new system of magic of Warrens takes over. And by this time, there are only a few Elder Gods left, some can end up adapting to the new magic system and become new gods, but most of them end up failing. Though, by this time, only a few Elder Gods are left, some adapt to the new system and become new gods, but the few remaining have a large impact on the story. New gods do not use blood sacrifices for their power, but they still need worshippers, and worship adds to their power. This was not always a good deal for the god, as worshippers sometimes had influence over the actions of their god, sometimes against the god's will. Typically, gods will rule over a warren such as Shadow, though they don't control access to said warren. Exceptions to these are patron gods, who preside over a job or activity, like assassins, and also gods who embody a concept, such as a god of war. While gods are incredibly powerful, they very rarely directly involve themselves, usually using chosen mortals to do their bidding and fulfill their schemes. This is because they enjoy being sneaky and like to keep their plans hidden as much as possible, but it's also because of something called convergence. The idea that power draws power. Essentially, if an Ascendant or God starts mucking about in the mortal realm too much, it will draw the attention of others. Usually it's a gradual buildup that will culminate in a large confrontation, during which anyone can die, and the outcome greatly affects the story and the path of the world. One last note about Gods acting indirectly is that, if they come to the mortal realm, they are relatively easy to kill. They're still very powerful, but with one push of luck they can die almost as easily as a mortal. 
Finally, how does one become a god or ascendant? Once again, this can be a frustrating topic as there's no concrete answers at all. There are many different paths to ascendancy, so here are a few commonly known ones. Gain magical power. Every mage is on the path, but the more power you get, the better. Exceptional martial prowess. It can be kind of thought of as leveling up as a character. Find and sit on an unoccupied throne of power. This will automatically ascend the character. Gain a lot of followers, as willpower always adds up. Last but not least, die. It's not really explained, but sometimes a character may need to die in order to fully ascend or achieve godhood. However, this is not a complete list. As you read, you'll come to understand the process a lot more, but you'll never be given concrete rules for it. Hopefully this helped you out and see the difference between what is a god and what is an ascendant uh, and how they relate to each other, but if you have any more questions about this, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer it for you. Hopefully you all have a good day. Bye bye.